interpretation of graphs but particularly a cubic graph there are different ways that they can ask you in an exam so i'm going to show you two different ways um that they can ask you the first one they when they give they've given you x intercept they will not tell you that the x intercept this is one thing that you can see in the graph where it cuts the x axis then you have x intercepts then they will give you a formula as well here they've given us y is equals to 2x squared plus bx plus cx plus d they're actually giving us our A. So, and then they say determine the value of B, C, and D. So, what you start with is quite similar to a parabola that we did in grade 11. So, the formula is Y is equals to, you'll have your A and X minus R1. The R1 is the intercept X minus R2 and X minus R3. Because there are three intercepts, you'll have all three of them, right? From the formula, you can substitute for A. So you'll have Y is equals to your A is 2 from the formula. And X minus, your R1 is minus 1. So the minus is from the formula, from the minus 1. And then X minus 1. And X minus 2 from the intercept. And then you multiply it out. So we have two, I'll start multiplying these two brackets together. When I look at these two brackets, they are difference of two squares. So I don't have to multiply them out. You need to know difference of two squares in grade 12. If you don't know, there's a video in your channel that deals with difference of two squares. Go watch it. And then after that, I multiply the two brackets. X times X is X to the power 3. And X times 2 minus 2X. Two they tell that is minus x. They tell that it's plus 2. Then you multiply with a 2. 2x cubed minus 4x squared. I think I lost an x somewhere. That and that gave me that. That and that is x squared. Yes. x squared. 2 times that. That and that. Then minus 2x. Then plus 4. Then you answer the question. You have to write this. If they've written ask you to name B, C, and D, you can't leave your answer like that. You have to say B is equals to, B is the one that goes with X squared. So B is minus 4. Your C is equals to minus 2. And your D is equals to 4. If your question asks you specifically for A, B, and C, you have to have it like that. You get marks for that. Don't expect a marker to figure it out from the equation if they have asked you that. This is the first way of writing the when you are given intercept. I want to do another one when you are given intercept and you have a turning point. So it's slightly different from this, but it's quite similar. Okay, let's do that one. Okay, when they give you intercept, sometimes they might give you the one with the two intercept. When it has two intercepts, it means that one of the intercepts is the turning point. So, you, you would not have three intercepts. When you get this, uh, even if they're not asking for a formula, but when you get this, when, when you have a, a, a cubic graph and it has two intercepts, it means one of the intercepts is the turning point. This intercept is an intercept, also a turning point. So, when, when, you, when you have this, now the question here is determine the equation. They didn't ask you for A, B, and C. So, what we're going to do, you're going to have y is equals to a into x minus r1 is the first intercept. And then x minus r2 is the second intercept. Then it has a square. The one that has a square is the intercept one. Right? So let's fill up the values. Here you're going to calculate for a first. y is equals to a into x minus my ry is minus 3 so minus minus 3 because it's the one that it's not an intercept and then that one with a square is x minus 2 and then squared right 
because you are calculating for A, you're going to use any other point that you're given on the graph. So we are given a 3 and a minus 6. Our x is 3 and y is minus 6. So I have minus 6 is equal to A into 3 plus, no man, 3. My x is 3. My x is 3 plus 3. It's 3 minus 2 all squared. So 3 plus 3 will give me 6. 3 minus 2 will give me 1. 1 squared is 1. So I'll get a minus 6 is equal to 6a. I'll divide by 6 both sides. And then minus 1 is equal to a. It means that my a is minus 1. So I'll go here. Where I have substituted the values already. Then I'll go y is equal to, then I substitute for minus 1 into x plus 3, x minus 2, or squared, minus 1, x plus 3, and then multiply this um, fraction, not fraction, this uh, binomial first. Also, we have a video of multiplying binomials. Then first times first is x squared, first times second times 2 is minus 4x, last times last is positive 4. If you don't know the first and the last, please find the video. There's a video. It says grade 10. There's a video that explains to you how you multiply these things. There's no need in the exam to write two of them. Then now we multiply this bracket and that bracket before the minus 1. So x times x will be x to the power 3. x times 1 minus 4. x squared. x times 4 will be plus 4. x 3 times plus 3x squared minus 12x and x plus 12. We're going to add like terms in the bracket first before we multiply by minus 1. Get x to the power 3. Then that one and that one will give me a minus x squared. Then this one and that one will give you a minus x. 8x then a plus 12 then I multiply with a minus 1 I get a minus x cubed plus x squared plus 8x minus 12 this is how it's done then we need to see the third one it's actually the second one when you are not given the intercept but you are given a turning point let's see that one Okay, uh, the second kind is when you are given a stationary point and one other point. But with a stationary, stationary, my stationary is wrong. Okay, the third one is when you are given a stationary point and one other point. What is very important with a stationary point, you can't look at a graph and think it's a stationary point. You should get a statement that tells you that coordinate is a stationary point. So if they don't say it's a stationary point in the question, you can't say it's a stationary point, even if it looks like that. So in this question, I'm telling you it's a stationary point, the 2 and the minus 32. And then the other point, with this graph, the other point, they expect you to figure it out. When you look at our intercept, it, it cross at z, a y intercept, it's at 0 and 0. So they expect you to figure that out. So uh, when you look at our equation, they've given us an equation, the d is the intercept so it means my d is equals to zero because it crosses at zero and zero my y intercept is zero right then um you 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 do the derivative of this so i'm gonna have dy over dx then i do the derivative what you need to remember about the derivative a derivative of a variable I say dy over dx. So any variable that is not x, I'm deriving y in terms of x. Any variable that is not x, I treat it as a constant, meaning that I treat it as a number. So here, my derivative is going to be minus 3x squared. And then this will be plus 2bx. And then I'll have a plus c. Right? This is my derivative. You remember that the derivative equal to zero is a stationary point. So I'm going to take that, equate it to zero. I'm 
we're going to equate it to zero. Why am I equating it to zero? Because derivative uh, equals to zero is a stationary point. Okay, let's look at the stationary point. The coordinate of x in the stationary point is two. So I'm going to substitute two in the formula. I'm going to have negative three into two squared plus two b into two plus c is equals to zero. Then that will give me four times two and get a negative twelve. Then plus two b plus c is equals to zero. I'm gonna make c the subject of the formula. I'm gonna have twelve minus two b. This will be my equation one. All right. When we get here, multiplying, when we multiply that, that gives you four. Then we get minus two. Two times two will give you a four b, and then the c. Then I make the c subject of the formula, then you get that. This is my equation one, right? So for equation two, I'm going to take the original equation and substitute the coordinates. So I'm going to have y is equal to minus x cubed plus bx squared plus cx. Do you remember my d is zero there? So I'm not going to write the, the zero. Then I'm going to take this coordinate and substitute here. My y is 32 minus my x is 2 plus b is 2 plus c is 2. Right? So I have minus 32. 2 times 2 to the power 3 is 8. So I'll have minus 8. Then 2 times 2 is 4. I'll have plus 4b and then plus 2c. Right? This will be my equation 2. Oh, but if you take this to the other side, I'll get minus 24 is equal to 4b plus 2c. This will be my equation 2. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to substitute the equation 1 in the equation 2 right so I'm gonna write it up here okay let let's just write our equation 2 here 24 is equals to 4b plus 2c right I'm gonna substitute the equation 1 in equation 2 so I'm gonna substitute my c I'm gonna have minus 24 equals to 4b plus 2, my C is 12 minus 4B. Then I have minus 24, squares to 2, uh, 4B. Then 2 times is 24. Then 2 times is minus 8B. Taking 24 to the other side is going to be minus 48 is equal to minus 4B. So I'm going to divide by minus 4. Divide by minus 4. Then I have 48 divided by. Then 12 is equal to B. My B is 12. Now I must calculate my C. C is equal to, using the equation, 12 minus 4, but my B is 12. So my C is 12 minus 4 times 12. My C is minus 36. Right. B, Y is equals to minus X squared. My B is 12, so it's plus 12 X squared. My C is 36, so minus 36 X. You remember my D is 0. So this is the equation. So you, you really need to practice. And in an exam, please don't learn one method. Look at what you are given. Whether you are given intercept, whether you are given turning point, or whatever you are given, it, it, it determines the kind of uh, formula you are going to use. This is the end of our lesson. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.